Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales for Ocean News Episode 2. And for this episode I've gathered some really cool recent discoveries on how ocean animals have evolved and adapted to their environment. Now we all know the ocean is home to some really weird and wonderful animals. From fish whose shiny scaled silvery surfaces would make Edward Cullen jealous, to goblin sharks who would make any normal goblin jealous, and to the cutest ever Dumbo octopus who would make the perfect Disney character. The ocean is home to storytale like creatures and so it's no wonder that we as marine biologists are just starting to delve into how these animals experience their world, what their life is like and how they're adapted and evolved to live in the ocean. But there has been some really cool recent research in this area and that's what we're talking about today. Please remember to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button and let's get into it. So our first story is about how fish feel empathy. Now obviously we as humans we feel emotions. Sometimes too many emotions but we can be happy, we can be sad, we can be afraid and so much more. And unless you're Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, what does that mean? We can also usually experience empathy, which is the ability to understand and share somebody else's feelings. Now, usually scientists are quite hesitant to attribute these human-like feelings to animals, but anybody who has owned a dog and come home from a long days of work will know that certain animals can definitely feel emotion. But dogs are mammals, they're quite similar to us. What about things like fish who are so completely different to us? Can they feel emotion? So fish are so completely different to us in the way they look, move, behave, what their bodies are made up or out of, that even up until recently, many scientists didn't even think that they felt physical pain, never mind emotions. Although the general consensus in the scientific community has shifted. So for example, back in 2016, a neuroscientist wrote and published an essay about why fish don't feel pain. And in this essay, he actually concluded that mammals feel things and only mammal brains have a structure called the neocortex. Ergo fish, lacking a neocortex, feel nothing. But there were many scientists who disagreed with him and there were many opposing responses to this because of the recent and mounting evidence that fish not only feel physical pain but other things like anxiety and pleasure too. So for example research has shown that fish have the necessary hardware in order to feel pain so they have nerve cells that are capable of feeling pain and not only that there have been many behavioral experiments to show that fish respond to pain. One of my favorites was done with zebrafish where they were injected with something that caused them pain and in response they moved to a next door tank which was a very scary environment for them because it was barren, brightly lit, there was no place for them to hide from predators but they moved into the scary environment because that's where the painkillers were. So they were after the painkillers which means they responded to the pain which means that for sure they felt the pain in the first place. And one of my favorite quotes around this whole topic comes from famous oceanographer Sylvia Earle who said that Fish have had a few hundred million years to figure things out. We are newcomers. I find it astonishing that many people seem shocked that the idea that fish can feel. The way I see it, some people have wondrous fish-like characteristics they can think and feel. And what she means here is that fish evolved way before us. In fact, their brains were the template for our brains. So instead of saying that fish have human-like characteristics, we should be saying that we have fish-like characteristics. But fish, to go even beyond that, have so many cool senses that we could only dream about. They have taste buds all the way along their bodies, they see in four colors instead of three like us. They can sense the electrical signals of other animals around them. So they have really, really cool, highly developed senses. So to go and say that they feel pain is really not all that out there. And beyond this, there's not only evidence that they feel physical pain, but there's also evidence to suggest or to show, not suggest, to show that they feel emotions too. And all you need to do is look at how the behavior of fish change in response to the presence of a predator to know that this is true. An underwater photographer wanted to capture what it kind of felt like to be inside of a herring net or a herring trap and he recalled, this is what he recalled, at first the fish were swimming in slow calm circles as I floated above them. Then the net began to rise. Tail beats and breathing rates increased. Chaos ensued as they lost the space between them. Fish searching in vain for an exit slammed into each other. 
So the fish were really feeling this fear and it was so real and so visceral that the underwater photographer himself started to panic. So there's definitely this behavioral response and this is likely caused by the fish being afraid, feeling fear, feeling emotion. And to go even one step beyond that, which is what the most recent research shows, is that fish can also feel empathy. So fish can recognize and respond to the fish around them being afraid. And the coolest part is scientists have just discovered that this empathetic response is controlled by the same hormone that controls empathy in humans, oxytocin. So in this recent study, they set up this really cool experiment where scientists genetically modified zebrafish and they sort of uh, removed the gene that allowed them to produce and detect oxytocin. So these fish, you know, no longer had oxytocin in their bodies. And when they saw other fish being afraid, they didn't care. They kind of continued to behave the same way. Whereas normal fish who are not genetically modified, the control group, they saw other fish being afraid and they themselves responded in fear. And then one step further, the scientists then um, injected oxytocin into the bodies of the fish who were genetically modified and they then started to show this fear response. So oxytocin is controlling this fear response, controlling this empathy response when they see other fish being afraid which is the same in humans, which is so freaking cool and just goes to show how fish are more like us, or should I say we are more like fish than previously thought. But now we're moving on to the next story, which is where instead of an ocean animal being more similar to us than previously thought, they are completely and utterly different in one very important aspect. Let me introduce you to the comb jelly, a gelatinous type of animal that is not a jellyfish, even though it looks like a jellyfish. It actually belongs to a completely different phylum called tenophores, and they have these tiny hair-like structures along their body called cilia, which they move in waves to propel themselves forward. Now where it starts to get really interesting is that this type of animal is considered one of the earliest to branch off of the evolutionary tree of life. And because of this, marine biologists have been interested in one aspect of their biology in particular, their nervous system. Now scientists have known for a while that they do have a really weird nervous system. So while our nervous system and those of most other animals uh, consist of a brain, a central cord and nerves radiating from that brain and central cord, the nervous system of a comb jelly is completely different and has a structure of what scientists call a diffuse nerve net, meaning that there's kind of nerves just hanging around everywhere and there's no central organization around a brain or a cord. But it's only with recent technological advancements that scientists were able to create a really high resolution 3D scan of their nervous system. And what they found was even more interesting than that. So not only was, were they different in structure, they, you know, they have this diffused nerve net, but it also seems to be different in function. So in every single kind of nervous system, from anemones to dolphins to humans, it's made up of nerve cells, which kind of sit next to each other. The nerve cells don't touch and they communicate by sending electrical signals called synapses between the nerve cells. But what the scientists found with the comb jelly's nerve cells is that they were actually fused together. They were touching. So there's no need for these electrical signals or synapses because the nerves are already touching each other. So they're functioning in a completely different way. And the reason why this is so incredible was that up until now, scientists had always assumed that there had been one evolutionary origin of the nervous system. So the nervous system evolved once in a shared common ancestor many, 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 many years ago. But because the comb jelly's nervous system is so completely different to everything else, it starts to challenge that idea and might just suggest that comb jellies evolve their own nervous system completely separate to everybody else's nervous system. So there might just be two evolutionary origins of the nervous system. And because the nervous system is so important and controls everything from how you move, sense and interact with your environment, it might just rewrite the story of brain evolution. Now, we do have to take this with a pinch of salt. Not all scientists think that. And an alternate suggestion is just that comb jellies evolved their nervous system into something weird and wonderful, but still shared the same evolutionary origin as everybody else. Um, so we don't really know what is right and wrong yet, but it does open up a whole new can of worms and a whole bunch of more research is definitely needed. And it just leaves me wondering, because their nervous system is so different, what it feels like to be a comb jelly. 
And in our final story, we stick to the weird and wonderful world of invertebrates and we look at a discovery involving octopus and their close friends, the squid and cuttlefish. Now, all three of these animals belong to the same group called cephalopods, which literally means head foot because they share the same characteristics in that their feet, or in this case, their tentacles, are directly connected to their head um, with, in the absence of a body. But even though they are similar in some ways, they are different in others. And this recent research shows that these differences extend to their taste buds. Now, octopus, squid, and cuttlefish, all three of these animals have suckers along their tentacles, and they actually use these suckers to taste the world around them. So it's kind of like if you had a tongue on the end of each of your fingers that you could use to taste everything that you touch. So just like with the comb jellies who have a completely new kind of nervous system, this is a completely new type of sensory system where touch is taste and just goes to show how these ocean animals are really weirdly adapted to their life in the ocean. And we as marine biologists are just starting to understand how this new type of touches taste sensory system works. So while you and I have evolved to love sugary and fatty things because of the high calorie content, researchers have just found that octopus has actually evolved to love greasy compounds, while squid and cuttlefish have evolved a taste system for bitter compounds. And scientists think this is likely related to their hunting lifestyle. So octopus, you know, they use their tentacles to get in the rocky crevices and under things. Um, and so it makes sense that they are able to detect greasy molecules because this is what lives on things like the shells of crabs, which is what they eat. So it can help them to detect their prey. And then also um, their eggs are surrounded by these kinds of greasy molecules. So it helps them to locate their eggs. So that makes sense. Whereas squid and cuttlefish have a completely different type of hunting lifestyle. You know, they're ambush predators and they rely on eyesight alone. So they'll hide in wait and then all of a sudden quickly ambush their prey. And then once they have their prey, they need to be able to quickly decide whether to eat it or not. And this is where being able to detect bitter compounds is a superpower because bitterness is often a sign that something is off or poisonous. So if they are able to detect their bitter compounds, it allows them to quickly decide whether what they've caught is good to eat or not. So again, this just really goes to show how these ocean animals can be so completely different to us because they've adapted to a completely different environment. Um, they have a different type of sensory system and taste weird and wacky things. Comb jellies have their really crazy nervous system, which means we actually have no idea how they feel the world around them. And fish can feel empathy. <laughs> There's lots of crazy things going on. But I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you have anything to add to the stories, leave it down below. If you've ha heard of any cool ocean news stories, please leave it down in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you all have a happy day.